Hello, I'm Father Louis Skirty, and I welcome you to Friends of the Word, the weekday word. My guest, once again, is Carl Balea. Carl has been here before, and I like the insights that you share with us, Carl. Welcome. Thanks, Father. Thanks for having me again. Carl has been involved with uh, liturgical music as the music director of music mm-hmm. ministry in various parishes. Right. And right now, I, what I want to do today is focus on where the music started in your life and where it is now okay, as far sure. as your profession and your your academic experiences. Sure. Um, since Carl is involved with liturgical music as well as his own secular music and, and his performances, I'd like to use the scripture from Colossians. Uh, th- this is from Letter of the Colossians, chapter 3. Be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as an all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and giving thanks to him through God the Father. And I think our experiences of your performing and and, uh, leading people in music ministry Mm -hmm. at the chapel and your experiences in various churches certainly is doing that, giving (laughs) honor to to God the Father. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, How difficult is it it to encourage people to, one, join a choir, two, to sing in a congregation? Oh, that's one of the challenges, I think, is the the pastoral reality. Um, Working with people, getting everyone to get on board, to be part of one common goal, to get involved. But, you know, through uh, encouragement, prayer, and uh, trying to be uh, pastoral, you hopefully get some success, and the Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit helps, Mm -hmm. so... That one does the Holy Spirit. I was quite a bit. So y- you got involved with uh, music minister at music at William Patterson University. Mm-hmm. Right. You graduated. Could give us that whole sure. program. Right. So I did my undergraduate <laughs> in uh, music at William Patterson University. Uh, and a few recitals. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my gosh. Um, I was a music performance major, but also mu- music education. So the whole plan was to be uh, a certified K to twelve music teacher, uh, which I am certified, but. Uh, or certifiable, I don't know. But, uh, can I make that joke? Is that, is that, it's all right. That's okay. <laughs> um, but I ended up being, was encouraged to pursue performance. Um, so after my undergraduate in music education, I uh, pursued performance. I did my master's at City University of New York, Brooklyn mm-hmm. College Conservatory of Music. I had a fantastic, really famous uh, piano teacher uh, that I got to study with there. Uh, and who was that? That was Ursula Oppens. That's great. Um, and that was a uh, life-changing experience. She was fantastic. Um, and part of the reason why I picked that school and picked, really chose to study with her was because of uh, the repertoire experience I gained at William Patterson. They were focused on a lot of 20th and 21st century uh, classical repertoire, mm-hmm. and that was one of her specialties. So that was a strong suit at William Patterson. I happened to be there and be formed in that environment, so I was able to take that with me. Uh, I studied uh, at Brooklyn and then uh, decided to continue going with my uh, music education and pursue a Doctor of Musical Arts in uh, piano performance. I'm at Rutgers University for that right now. Excellent. When do you hope so. to complete that? Oh, that's a, it's a loaded question. Depends oh. how long it takes to write my dissertation, yeah, that's and, the dissertation and then finish with my recitals and all those requirements. Um, but I'm blessed to be there. And uh, How often are you performing at you your recitals? Yeah, it, it, it depends. I mean, I probably 20, 30 times a year, I would really? imagine. It's, it's a lot. Um, you know, I just got back. Uh, I was two weeks in Austria performing. I performed a Haydn piano concerto and some chamber music. Right. I got I, to I conduct saw some, some of that. Uh, some Beethoven, so uh, played a little organ. So you know, there was a, lo- a lot of wonderful music experience. How does that happen? How does you get invited to go? Right. Well, so basically, we're at, at Rutgers University. We have this uh, incredible teacher, phenomenal person, uh, Min Kwan, uh, and she uh, invites students to uh, to perform and to participate in these music festivals that she runs. Uh, oh. You know, through a nonprofit center of musical excellence, and we get involved, and uh, it creates incredible opportunities for many, and many exposure. talented artists. Exposure, that's yes, wonderful. Yeah. The year before, we were in Luxembourg. And, I remember uh, that, right? Yeah. Right. So there's a, a lot of opportunities, and then I have recitals coming up in, in Brooklyn in October. Art song, so voice and piano, uh, promoting the works of living composers. Um, and air, and composers of mine and solo piano repertoire that I'm interested in. Right, right. So that's wonderful. Um, what does music do for you? Oh gosh. Uh, well, in, in a lot of ways, I I mean, I, I feel in a way I'm in a relationship with music. I feel like I'm mm. in a 
in a marriage in a way. Uh, you know, not to overly uh, mystify this, but there is a sort of um, relational aspect uh, towards music and the daily routine of practicing, of uh, performing, of studying, of being curious about it. Mm. Uh, approaching music not just as a pianist, um, but also as a musician. Uh, not just focusing on the technical aspects of my piano playing, but also on uh, why did the composer choose to use this chord progression here? Why is the orchestration like that there? You know, what, is, what, what does the composer mean by that sforzando? Mm. Those types of uh, questions provide uh, interest. I mean, that's a lot of the field of musical analysis and music theory, and, and those are areas that I'm quite uh, enthralled with as well. That's beautiful. Uh, any musical people in your family? Was there any inspiration? No. no I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, oh, my parents don't. don't no, 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 no. I'm um, here, of course. I mean, I, I have, uh, believe it or not, on my father's side, um, I think his great aunts were nuns. Okay. And they uh, sang Gregorian chant in the, in the choir. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, I mean, but we don't have any Toscaninis in our family. But, <laughs> but we have them... Uh, and then also on their side, I have some, uh, I think, third cousins who one's a percussionist and one's an opera singer. Interesting. Well, that, that's so interesting. In the upper generations, yeah. you have music in the family. Yes. That, that, and mm -hmm. it's progressed. In and on my mother's, I don't want to, because she'll be upset if she's not, you know. Eric but, included. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they come, they're talented uh, family. She was an actress, so, you know, because Your mother of that. Yeah. Is an actress. Oh, yeah. It's, that's my father. Really? <laughs> but, but yeah, but basically... Uh, or stage. <laughs> so because of that, uh, there is a dramatic sense. You know, oh, sense, I didn't realize sense. that. A lot of times a performer is an actor. They're trying to get into the character of the piece that they're playing. Yes, yes. And in, in, in the early stages of the church, Middle Ages, um, liturgy was also... Uh, put in the same category almost as drama mm. and and the, the items that they would carry up in a procession right. like, like I think of uh, Palm Sunday Jesus on a donkey of course. on wheels and dragging that up. again drama music yeah. uh, all the elements mm -hmm. came together and, and you've used all of that in your musical presentations at, at liturgy as well mm, right that's true and I think that's the beauty of, of the liturgical tradition of the church is that uh, all the senses are represented whether yes. you're being uh washed with holy water or you're yes. smelling incense or you're hearing beautiful music you know right i think that's all uh, the visual components the beautiful vestments all of these uh things to to point this towards something greater than ourselves i i think it gives us a greater appreciation of course and and uh, whether it's music or visuals it, it raises us up mm. it, it, if we get into it we it raises us up out of the humdrum of life absolutely in order to prepare us to go back to life. Yes. And I, I think the, the Eastern traditions do that more than we do. Mm -hmm. um, their music is almost hierarchical, right. and their, the architecture is as well hierarchical. And their theology is that when you come into liturgy, uh, you're entering the presence of God, you're, you're right. entering heaven, mm -hmm. so that you can have the strength to go out. Absolutely. We're more Westerners, are more right. horizontal mm -hmm. in our, our performances and, and practices. So we're rooted in, in common right. elements, and we try to, again, bring those common elements exactly. of faith outside mm -hmm. as, as, we, uh, as we develop as, right. as a community. Mm -hmm. What does a community need to do to enhance its liturgies musically? Well, um, speaking as a music director, I would say hire a good music director. Yeah. Good. <laughs> you know, good. I mean, it, there important. is there, uh, having the resources is important to do that, and if one can... Uh, support that that's that's a, a huge aspect of it but then also just to make it a culture where uh music and the arts are appreciated and fostered maybe have a concert series right uh to not just work then focus i feel like it's twofold one is uh the liturgical aspect of music but then two what are we doing culturally artistically outside of the liturgy mm. to create uh, a culture um a people who are then able to recognize great art and great music and the two kind of infuse and, I guess, uh, cooperate, interpollinate each mm -hmm. other. Uh, Good. And, and I think sacred art, liturgical, visual, et cetera, performance is, is rooted in our history as a church. Of course, yeah. And we have to constantly improve, build upon, and, and present it and practice it to appreciate it. Exactly. I mean, we're both medieval, right, in some ways, or we're, we're, we're both uh, in touch with our past, but at the same time, we're all modern. Right? Yes, yes. You know? 
so, need to be radically modern. Yeah. Rooted in the radics and our roots yes. and modern and contemporary liturgy. Again, faithful to the gospel, of course. faithful to the church mm -hmm. as well. Thank it's you, beautiful. Paul. This has been wonderful. Oh, thanks, I appreciate Father, so much for having coming me. Coming back, and we'll yeah, have you again pleasure. in the future. Let's do it. This has been Father Louis Skirty with Friends of the Word, interviewing Carl Balea, music minister, performer, and wow. talented guy. <laughs> thanks, Father, so much.